The history of the Delaware Valley School District, its buildings, teachers, and students begins on March 26, 1814, when the County of Pike was created from neighboring Wayne County. Still a wilderness, Pike County did not have enough of a population to have its own schools. In 1834, Governor George Wolfe created the Free School Law of, in Pennsylvania, necessitating the creation of one-room schoolhouses. George Wolfe was remembered, along with Horace Mann, as the founder of the free school movement. The idea of the one-room schoolhouse, popular at the time, necessitated that boys and girls uh, of different ages and ability levels be housed in the same school at the same time. As the population of Pike County grew, one-room schoolhouses began to shoot up in the different boroughs and townships. Delaware, Digman, Shohola, and Westfall townships, as well as Milford and Matamoris boroughs, all had their own one-room schoolhouses. The Shakopee Schoolhouse uh, on Shakopee Road in Milford still stands as a testament to the one-room schoolhouse. The following is an excerpt from WVIA special, Our Town, Milford, which discusses the Shakopee Schoolhouse. Married Mary Nearing. Mary Nearing was a teacher in the Milford area for over 50 years. She originally taught in a one-room schoolhouse out on Old Milford Road in Raymondskill on the corner there. Very similar to the Shakopee one-room schoolhouse that's uh, located here in Milford. I think you could best describe the Shakopee schoolhouse as an interactive museum. You can come in and sit at the desks. There are some books that are less fragile that you can touch. If you want to touch the one from 1853, I have to touch it. When people come inside, we let them ring the bell, and the adults get as big a thrill as the children do, and teachers love it. We have a large stool with a dunce cap in the front corner of the schoolhouse. And there hasn't been a single teacher that I can think of that did not come in, plunk themselves down on the stool, put on the dunce cap and say, take my picture. A one room schoolhouse is very much like homeschooling a good sized family, <laughs> especially if you have them in eight different years because it was grades one through eight. The teacher was not much older than the students. She could be as young as 16. The last two teachers were Flora Rochette Smith and Jean Struthers Newell. And they lived to be 106 and 104 years respectively. When this the Shakopee Schoolhouse is not the only example of early education in Pike County. Gray Towers, home to the Pinchot family, is situated in Milford. Gifford Pinchot, the first head of the United States Forestry Service, was raised here. Gifford Pinchot, along with John Muir and Teddy Roosevelt, spearheaded the conservation effort in the early 20th century in America. Gifford Pinchot believed that in order to ensure nature for future generations, it must be used responsibly. To this end, he created the Yale Forestry School at Forest Hall in Milford. Students were taught conservation, logging, and responsible means to ensure nature for future generations. As the consolidation movement reached rural areas in the 1940s and 50s, Pike County was severed into three distinct school districts, Delaware Valley being the only one completely enclosed within Pike County. Smaller schools such as the Matamoris High School, the Milford High School, and other smaller town schools were created. Milford High School still stands today, but as shops. Again, from WVIA. Where I attended you know, high school back in those days. We had a very large graduating class. We had 22. But it was being sold, and my wife was driving by the site where it was being renovated. And she saw on the ground this bell that used to be in the belfry of the school. Our lives were guided by that bell because you heard it ring all over town and that was your signal you better get up and get moving. So she came home and uh, talked to me. I talked to two of my friends who were also alumni and we went there and we confiscated the bell. 
And about eight or ten years later, I start writing letters to the Secretary of Education. I got a bell. And um, they responded. We finally made arrangements to take the bell to Washington. It was quite an event. There are six of us that went to Washington. The Department of Education is a couple blocks west of the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. And we had a regular dedication ceremony. The um, secretary came out and uh, he accepted the bell on behalf of the, uh, of the United States government. And it's still there. The next issue to affect the Delaware Valley School District after consolidation was the Tox Island Dam Project. As early as 1934, the Army Corps of Engineers had suggested building an earthen dam at Tox Island on the Delaware River. The reservoir would have drinking water for New York and Philadelphia. However, staunch opposition headed by Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas had the plan scrapped. Instead, after purchasing the towns of Dingman's Ferry and Bushkill through eminent domain, the federal government decided to create the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area. Due to the loss of homes, the Delaware Valley School District receives an impact fee from the national government to pay for lost tax revenue. Delaware Valley School District and neighboring school districts in Monarch County have seen a spike in population in the 1990s and especially after the September 11th, 2001 terror attacks. Many people moved out of the city to these two counties, however, kept their jobs in the city of North Jersey, making these two counties, as can be seen in the map below, commuting counties. One issue is the fact that students re return home from school to empty houses. Peak enrollment for the district occurred in 2006 when roughly 6,000 students were enrolled. The high school complex sees around 1,800 students annually. The population spike has not deterred from the academics at Delaware Valley though, where Newsweek has recognized them as an AP Scholar School and the Department of Education has awarded them a Blue Ribbon Excellence Award in 2010 and 2011. The Delaware Valley Elementary School will be breaking ground on a new facility which they hope to inhabit in 2016.